Hello, everybody. This is Reality Rehab. I am your host, Samantha Kelly. And today is our very first show. We have something so, something I'm so happy about. We have the most lovable and entertaining house guest from this season, in my opinion. We have Jason Roy on our show tonight. Hey, guys. And we also have a super fan and writer, Kat Arnett. Hey, everybody. Um, a little bit later in the show, we are hoping to have um, James's roommate and best friend on. Uh, his name is also Jason. We'll be referring to him as Jay Nasty. If uh, his computer works well enough and he gets on, that'll be a real treat. Um, but anyways, let's get right to it. Jason, how are you enjoying Big Brother now that you've been out of the house and you can watch it? Oh, well, it's really weird to watch the season I've been on. I'm obsessed with the show. I watch it every summer. I actually watch it year-round. It's really weird to see my cast, because I really just look at them like they're my roommates that I all hate, when actually they're TV characters that I would normally be obsessed with. I mean, every year I'm a feed watcher. I haven't done too much of the feeds this year because I spent too much time with those people already. But it's very interesting to see how everyone looks on the outside world, or even how the house looks on the outside world. What's different, like... Oh, seeing well, people, like seeing people, seeing how they actually act in the diary room, and I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, looking at the house, the house looks really tiny in person. It looks massive on TV. I mean, I knew it looked massive on TV, and when you first go in there, you go, "Wow, this is small." But um, really, just seeing um, the stuff you can't see when you're in the house. I spent so much time outside smoking, doing me that I wasn't hanging out in the HOH room with the Sixth Sense. So it was really interesting to see all the gameplay that didn't look like it was happening while I was in there. Was there anything that you saw um, that really surprised you as far as gameplay that you just were clueless about? Mm. Not really, because even we did not think that the Sixth Sense was a real alliance, but I mean, in my head, I had always grouped those people as a so-called group. I think we were naive to think that there wasn't clear-cut alliances going on and we were just a bunch of little groups when I should know this is Big Brother. Somebody has rounded a bunch of these groups together, but you just end up thinking that those people are just friendly with each other. So there was nothing that I was terribly surprised at, but um, all things that I think I already subconsciously knew it just was not um, set on or right. knew for a fact. Did well, you I, so, sorry, Kat, I just oh, want to quickly welcome, um, we've got another Jason, Jason Hester, who is um, the house guest James' roommate and best friend, so we want to welcome him to the show. Hello, Jason. Can you hear us? <laughs> we can see him. We can see you, but we can't quite hear you. So maybe, I, I see you've got the visor on. I was going to say, I love that he's got the <laughs> visor on. It's, it's neat that you guys have something in common. You both lived with James. Um, let's work on your audio a little bit, and then whenever you do come on, just say hi. Um, Kat, what was your question that you had? Oh, yeah, Jason, I was going to ask you. Um, watching it back, now that you've seen the diary room and you've seen conversations without you in them, is there anyone you like more that maybe you doesn't, didn't necessarily like living with? Mm -hmm. Like, is there any you have a better opinion of? I think that I was pretty good on with my opinions on people. I knew I didn't like Austin. Uh, I come out, America doesn't like Austin. I mean, I think I was pretty start on with what my opinions were already. Um, what actually takes people by surprise is I actually like Liz more on TV than I liked living with her. And I think people are surprised by that because of her goodbye message to me. But we all do snarking the messages in there. Thank God they never paid my goodbye message for Jeff because I went off. So, I mean, <laughs> you just sort of expect that, and I hold no hard feelings about it. I think it would probably be the twins, because in there, I knew the whole time they were twins. I never really thought to try to work with them. But on the outside, I know that America's not the biggest fan of Fingergate Liz right now. But I really don't have that much of a problem with her. I quite like the snassy bitchiness. 
<laughs> yeah, that that makes sense. I'm kind of shocked personally that people are so up in arms and angry at Liz and Austin for fooling around well, a little bit. I mean, they live in a house. It's a social experiment. Exactly. It's not like the first, that's happen. the first time that that's happened on Big oh, Brother. And it won't be the last. Exactly. I mean, and I I thought of think that it's not right that um, Liz gets more of the heat for it because Liz is a single lady. If she wants yeah. to do whatever she wants to do, that's her problem. Austin, on the other hand, is the person that should be getting the heat for it. But I think his girlfriend like burned all his clothes anyway. So. Yeah, I, I, think... saw, I saw that uh, going around. <laughs> I wonder if maybe having your sibling in the house would maybe be a, have the like a showmance be a little more judgmental because then you have somebody that you know from home with you in the house who can kind of call you on it like why are you doing this don't forget our parents we're on television your poor where, grandma <laughs> right where <laughs> other people can probably be a little freer with what they're doing and kind of forget what's happening that's true I I think that is part of it but Personally, I think that women seem to get more attacked by the media and the public when it comes to anything sex-related. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Just It just seems to, unfortunately, be the case. Um, Jay Nasty, for all of you guys out there, um, we are calling um, Jason Hester Jay Nasty since we have two Jasons. Um, if you click, there's an icon with a microphone or the settings. You might have to enable your microphone so we can hear you. Hopefully he heard that. And for anybody watching right now wondering what the hell he's wearing, well, he is dressed up as James dressed up as Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I feel like there's going to be lots of Audrey Halloween costumes this year? Oh, there has to be. <laughs> The blanket. And he's a big fan of Audrey, too, so he's poking fun at her, but in a loving way. Mm -hmm. And she's doing fine now, like, outside of the house, just to be clear, yeah. right? Like she's. Oh, yeah. She's very happy. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all in good fun. She's all good. Yeah, exactly. How has it been for you, Jason, with just, like, living your everyday life and people knowing who you are? I mean, it's a little bit strange, especially because I am very over-the-top and flamboyant, but I kind of know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. Living in that house, I was just being myself, and it was on. But, like, when I go to work and I stock groceries overnight with, like, 50-year-old men, I don't act like I do on that show. So I yeah. think a lot of people are like, first off, who the hell is this kid? Because we, th we thought he was somebody else. And it's probably weird just getting recognized in general because my city is not a very large place everyone sort of knows someone from my city was on and now everywhere I go like the first week I was back I got swarmed in a bar I got invited to some chicks wedding it's very very strange because you're like oh, how do you know me how do you know all my roommates because when you're in there and this is what sort of goes with Fingergate too you really do forget it's a TV show. You just hear the cameras move every now and then, and yeah, you know you have to go to the diary room and answer questions, but you really don't see the full scale of, no, they are putting this out three times a week. 5.5 .5 million people are watching this. You really don't get that when you're in there. You just feel like you're living in a parking lot. Yeah. That Not makes sense. Whatever. Sorry, not to mention whatever people are seeing on the feeds, right? Like, if right. you can't be consciously aware of it 24-7. Exactly. And think that there's people out there kind of watching you sleeping or doing whatever, right? And I'm a feed watcher, so I sort of knew what to expect with that. But still, you just end up forgetting, and you just are going to act how you would act whether there was cameras there or not, which is the beauty of Big Brother, is that you really don't have a camera crew in your face, you don't have a producer with a clipboard behind that camera, you're really just let free and they just see what happens. You're living, yeah. You're just living. That's a very good point. Um, was you said you got swarmed in the in the bar? Was that like your most shocking fan moment, or yeah. has there been another one? I mean, I've had a few funny moments. A lot of them, the first at first they were shocking or like scary. Like, why are all these people approaching me? Now I'm almost. It sounds bad. I'm almost too used to it. Like a guy approached me outside of a gas station the other day, and it was like one o'clock in the morning. I'm just trying to back buy a pack of cigarettes and go home. 
So I like beelined right past him. I kind of like did the Steve thing with him when Steve asked for a hug. I was like, oh yeah, I'm that kid from Big Brother. Bye. Like, and I was like, well, that wasn't very nice of you, Jason. You probably should have like stopped and talked to him. But it is, you get so caught off guard by some people that you're like not even thinking. You're just trying to get back to normal life. And then you're like, all these people know me now. Why? Why do they care? Who, who do you think, um, either that's left in the house or is that's in jury, who do you think is going to have the hardest time with that? Well, I think anyone that is at the jury point, they are all... It took a while for me to even adjust to the, on the outside. I mean, the first week I was looking at my best friends like, Chick, are you lying? And then I'm like, hold on, hold on. This is not a game anymore. There's no benefit for these people to lie to me. So it takes a little bit for you to get into, like, normal world frame of mind because in there it is all game and nothing but game so I think anyone that has spent the full three almost four months is gonna have a much harder time adjusting than I did I think people that are very um, infamous looking like not that I'm infamous looking but I'm I'm different than that usually are on there Austin is different than is usually on there so I think Austin is gonna get recognized a lot and he's gonna have to deal with that quite a bit yeah. Definitely, I think a few characters or a few people, I should say, are going to have um, more of a backlash against them than you have because you have been probably one of the most liked um, cast members from many seasons of Big Brother. Which is so weird. I will take it. I expect it to be absolutely loathed because I'm a feeder. There's people I hate every single year. And I was thinking, I'm pretty much as annoying as those people. There's no way that they aren't going to hate me. But it's nice to see that I'm not. And it's nice to see that my whole little goblin side of the house is the side that America has really like attached themselves to. It's good to know that I feel like my judge of character was in line with America's. It, it sure was. Um, I, I thought it was kind of strange, though. I personally was a huge um, Devon fan, and um, like you, I was so sad to um, see her go, but I feel like she was just so accurate in everything she thought was go that was going on in the house. And uh, But she seemed to not get as much love as you did for basically the same... The same reasons. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure where that stems from because I love Devon. I think we definitely mm -hmm. have very similar personalities. We definitely handled ourselves very similarly in there. And yeah. there is a lot of love out there for her, but not to like be like, oh, everybody loves me, but I don't, I see her get a little bit more hate than I do, and I actually yeah. appreciate the hate, it actually makes me laugh, those are my favorite things to retweet, because a lot of the times they're very valid points, like the people, people hate on me because I don't, didn't play the game hard enough, and they're right, I wasn't playing the game hard enough, and that's why I'm sitting here, and some of those people are still in there, so I actually kind of like the people that are trying to snatch my wig, because it's just entertainment. Well, if you go into the house, you have to know that you've got to have some of that coming towards yes. you. So it's good that you can definitely you can put um, a nice uh, perspective or spin on it and mm -hmm. make fun of yourself a little bit. I of think course. that's probably why people um, can relate to you so well. Um, well, because I'm because I'm just willing to make fun of myself. That well, that's well, no, because you bring yourself down to a normal oh, level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't hold yourself above anybody else, and that's those characters on Big Brother are the ones that people have a very hard time supporting. Yeah, I mean that's true. And I I just got a Snapchat recently. I think people think it's really weird that I like I can't respond to everyone because I get like four hundred, but I will respond to like quite a few. And people are like, "Oh my god, like you're a TV character," and I'm like, "No, I'm really just a kid that lives in their mom's basement. Like I can respond to your Snapchat." Um, I prayed. Well, I don't pray. <laughs> I wished to get on this show for like a million years, and it happened. So um, it's just nice to talk to the people who it's that their wishes as well, or just to mm -hmm. let them know that it is possible for you, because I'm just a normal kid, and I did happen to end up on my favorite show ever. And if that's your dream, then go out and go and get it. For me, I really found that you reminded me a lot of Brittany with your commentary. Like, you were honest, and you were funny, and it, I definitely, the minute you walked in the house, in your first diary room, I was like, oh, people are going to remember this kid forever. Like, he's going to be one of those sort of everybody loves you and you're going to come back for all-stars kind of, you know, you're a fan, but you're also... Well, let's hope. 
Let's hope. I don't think I played well enough to get All-Stars, though. I tried. Uh, you don't necessarily have to play well to get All-Stars, though, if you think back. That's true. Yeah. That's true. There has been people that were there that were not known for being the best out of their season. They were there because they were characters or because yeah. America just longed to see them again. So we can hope. Let's hope it's next year because yeah. I ain't trying to do it when I'm old like Jerry. Or... Well, like um, Jace, for example, he was somebody who came back for All Stars. Right. And he did not make and the he jury. He was pre jury. That's true. He's Personally, he's my um, BB crush. Is he? You're yeah. into that spiky hair girl? Well, no, it's it's not that. <laughs> it was his um his goofy song. What was uh -oh. it? Um it's a blow up inner tube. It's a blow up inner tube. That song. <laughs> he had you at that. <laughs> <laughs> he had me at blow up inner tube. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not gameplay or any or anything else. It was it was just that. Who would you say that your BB crush would be, Jason? Out of Ooh. anybody? Uh, well, my BB crush I could, pr I could probably name a couple. On just looks alone, I am obsessed with Nick from season eight. He's like the most beautiful man ever born in this world. Um, on everything wrapped up, I love Kevin Campbell from season 11. Kevin Campbell is my bae. He's the really the reason <laughs> that I was like, I think I really want to get on this show. So I would have to say Kevin. Or even Reagan. I love me some Reagan, but... Uh, on looks alone, on you can just take me on a date if all you did was ask my number, Nick from season eight. Mm, honey. He was beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Kat? Do you have anybody that um, nobody, is your BB crush? Nobody specifically, not at least from like the American show, but uh, Big Brother Canada, I'm still a sucker for Emmett. I think Ooh. he was just a really good game player, really sweet, but also kind of really happy that he's with Jillian. So they're really cute together. I, I, Jillian used to murder me on feeds. I hated that I had to watch her for that many months, but they are so adorable now. Post Big Brother. Mm hmm. Totally. Yeah. And they're, um, they were really strategic and they kind of like worked well together. But outside of the house, they're really happy and really cute on Twitter all the time. So you know, I have to support them, and they're Canadian. So I love the BB Canada people. Those are like my babies. No offense to my BB US people, but some of my Canadas are like my favorite. Yeah, Big Brother Canada is actually getting quite a bit of love um, on the Get Real LOL Facebook page. Um, people are finding it and discovering that they love it just as much as um, BB US. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, anyone that doesn't watch it, you better get your watching Big Brother Canada. It, kills, it fixes, fixes your winter. You don't have to wait all summer long. Yeah, if you're a super fan, you should be watching every single season of Big Brother that you can, every exactly. single series. Um, do you watch um, BB UK or I Celebrity do. Big Brother? I watch both of those. I watched Australia when it was on. Mm -hmm. I have seen every single English season, well, English speaking season of Big Brother there is. It, well, I've only watched one season of Big Brother Africa. They do speak English, but I haven't really ever. Um, going through all of their seasons, but everyone, everyone else, it's hard to watch. On. It is. It's a bit hard to watch because it is the video English, quality but... is bad. Like yeah. at least the version that I saw. Okay, how about this? If we could do an All Stars International. Oh my God! Epic. Yeah. What What would be our cast? Oh my gosh. Well, I would want Ika and Netta for sure from Big Brother Canada too. I would want Gary from Big Brother Canada 1. Absolutely. I would probably want Kevin from Big Brother Canada 3. Um, probably Sarah Hanlon because she's my bae and I love her. The UKs, we could like go on for a million years. I'd love <laughs> I to know. see like Gina Rio play like the way we play or Nikki Graham play oh, the way Nikki, we play. Oh, Nikki, please. Yeah. Oh, my God. It would be Have epic amazingness. Oh my god, I would be so obsessed with an international series just because a lot of my favorite characters are like all from all over the place. So to see all my favorite characters compete together would probably hurt my heart because I'd be like, yeah. no, why are they voting Nikki out? But, but you would be so on there, Jason. You would get to play with these people. That would be that would be even better until you realize that oh no you, they're not just your favorites now you have to compete against them like I love Danielle Donato but I'd be afraid mm -hmm. to compete against her she'd whoop my ass maybe. maybe 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 you could team up 
oh, I'd have to team up with her. Yeah. I have no other option. <laughs> Uh, I loved um, Drew from Big Brother Australia. Now that's another BB. Oh, fresh. beautiful mm, man! Do you remember mm -hmm. him? I do. God, he was gorgeous. The Australia guys <laughs> are always so gorgeous. I'm like, where did they find these all? Yeah. The whole of Australia, though. Like, anytime you see a guy who just happens to be Australian, you're like, of course, you're Australian. You're gorgeous. <laughs> of course, that's just how their genetics go. <laughs> it's like a bonus for living in a country with a bunch of animals and insects that are going to kill you in five seconds. <laughs> really gorgeous. <laughs> I guess it turns out that it works out. <laughs> An international um, all stars would be great if they could like combine the different formats too. You know, uh, make yep. it just so much fun. I would love that because that's that's one thing that I I do. I would like to see more of in any North American. Um, Big like Brother. a UK format, the public voting and things like that. I'd well, like to see them try to do more tasks together because everything is yeah. competitive in US and UK is very work as a group. Yeah, maybe change the way the competitions work some like they do with the tasks in the UK. Mm -hmm. I think that, that could be quite interesting. Um, let's get back to um, more of the fan talk. Have you gotten any um, fan artwork that you've just loved? Oh my god, I have gotten quite a bit online that I'm like obsessed with. I got this one picture that somebody drew and one of my girls who was like running Tumblr for me while I was gone sent it to me. It's me and Meg like in a cloud of smoke, like says the goblins under it. It's just adorable. <laughs> awesome. It's now like my iPod background. But um, I, I had someone draw me a picture and send it to me in the mail. I got gifts the other day. I don't know how these people found my address. But okay. <laughs> uh, but it's still very nice to receive, and it's so random that you're like, what? What is in this box? And then I got a cheetah hat and a sweatshirt with my name on it. It's super adorable, the things people will do. And the artwork is like, it, that's probably the part that's still like mind-blowing. Like, these are actually pictures of me. Like, someone actually took the time to draw a picture of my scallywag face while I sit on a couch and talk trash about people. It's very strange that anyone could latch on to me enough to want to do artwork, but it's so cute. Well, I'm sure you'll get somewhat used to it after a while, and hopefully the gifts and the art and the inspiration keeps on coming. Hey, I'll take it. Okay, so let's talk game now. Um, are you... Uh, just so everybody knows, we are a spoiler site, so um, if you are not wanting to know what's going on in the house, then um, maybe wait a little while <laughs> to watch this show. Um, but, yeah, we've got um, Austin with the HOH right now. How are you feeling about that? Well, I mean, it is what it is. He was bound to really win one again since Battle of the Block days. I knew his day was eventually coming. I didn't necessarily think when I first saw that comp that he would have been the person to win. But when you look at it, he's got twice as much leg span as everybody else. So it was probably even easier for him. He um, definitely does a whole lot of working out. As much as he doesn't do a lot of running, he definitely has the power to burst up on the word go. So I wasn't terribly surprised that he won. I mean, I would have rather he not won, but then again, the situation could have been worse. It could have been Vanessa that won. Or, I mean, look, seeing what Steve did with his last HOH, I yeah. mean, it could have been Steve. So I'm sort of, it's bittersweet that it's Austin. It was pretty amazing how close it was um, between him and James with hitting the buzzer. Yeah. Like, Oh, it Austin seems like almost every race was close legs. except Meg's, because Meg. Yeah. <laughs> my Meg. poor Meg. What but do you she think? looked really cute in the outfit, though. She That's did her. look cute. That you got that. <laughs> what do you think the HOH would have looked like? Um, because I I saw your predictions when um, James was HOH last time, mm -hmm. um, and you were right on. What do you think it would have looked like if James would have won HOH? If James would have won HOH. I think we probably would have had the same nominations, except we would have had a backdoor really happening. Well, Vanessa has won POV, so that yeah. backdoor, that would have been his backdoor, I'm sure. I think that he probably would have gone the same route that Austin did, though. It really seems like they have realized that they have to work with Austin twins for now, which is 
is good for their game, honestly. If, it, if I was in the house, it would have never happened. I would have never allowed us to work with him, not for a second. But now that I'm gone, you have to like let the memory of Jason go, and you have to create new deals that were maybe deals that would have never existed three or four weeks ago. So I think that it probably would have been the same scenario. He probably would have gone after Steve and Johnny Mac. I do think that his target would have been Steve over Johnny Mac, which it's opposite for the Austin side. They'd rather mm -hmm. send Johnny Mac home. I think that James and Meg know that Johnny Mac would be more of an asset to them than Steve would be, because no one has trusted Steve in there since like day five. Yeah. I, I was why, watching... I have to ask, why does nobody trust Steve? Like, is he acting so much differently in the house, or is it just because he's a little kind of socially awkward? Or? I think it's partially his so socially awkwardness, which I believe he is turning on for game purposes, because there are times where he's not very socially awkward and he fits in well with the group, and then there's times that he stares at the ground and plays with the hairs on his leg. So it's all really depending on whether what the situation is, if he feels like his back is against the wall. But in normal day-to-day -day runnings in that house, Steve will sit with everyone and say nothing. So you feel like any game to be talked in front of Steve is being absorbed and brought to someone else because he's not willing to put any information out. When someone is willing to say, this is my target, then you're okay with saying who your target is because that's your insurance policy to each other that you'll both keep your mouth shut. Steve had no insurance policy with anyone because he was only listening. And within the first couple of weeks, I had caught him really late at night in the hammock room with Vanessa, so I think the entire time I thought, okay, here's Vanessa's spy. This is the kid that's listening to us talk about everything. Here's the kid that's leaking all the information. So I always looked at him from that point of view of, this kid is the snitch. So I think other people eventually realize we really can't talk in front of him because we don't know what he's doing with this information. And me and Becky tried to tell him that and tried to then maybe see if he would say some information to us really form a bond and all he did was nod his creepy like one nod that he does I think it was Devon too at the beginning um, told him that he gives off a Ian vibe mm -hmm. so so that was probably a part of the trust being wavered that's true but I mean I think Ian played a lot more trustworthy than Steve has oh, played thus far. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, I think that he's gone to new depths. Ian was never that ratty. Yeah, he, he, he wasn't as uh, sneaky. Right. Seeming. And also, like, what he's done, like, he just shocked everybody with the double eviction. That, so. like, took me way off guard, especially because even before I left, I let him know, which was real information. I knew I was not going to get any votes. I told Jackie not to vote for me because I knew I wasn't going to get Clelly. I knew there was no way to get Steve, so I went to Steve and I said, Steve, listen, this is the only thing I can offer you in this game. I'm not offering it for your vote. I'm just letting you know for you to move on. Becky is going to target you. You are Becky's main target, which was truth that Becky told me. Becky didn't talk that much game to people, but she was talking to me late in the night, sort of when mm. me and Jackie would talk. And uh, I was shocked that from that information, he didn't go after Becky. I understand Vanessa had worked on him about Jackie a whole lot more, but I think especially because I had said it on my way out, not with an agenda, he really should have realized that going after Meg and Becky was uh, Meg and Jackie wasn't the smart move. If he really wanted to take out a threat of his, he should have went for Becky. Yeah. All right, so we have um, Jason Hester, James's roommate. He's back on. I think we can hear you now. Yeah, we can. <laughs> um, are you all? James threw me in the pool with my phone, bro. Ah, so have you been the victim to James's pranks, Jay Nasty? <laughs> it's, it's weird. That's just my email. Nobody ever calls me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can call you Jay if you prefer. I just thought it was way funnier to call you Jay Nasty. <laughs> I like that email at some point. <laughs> Never really heard anybody say it out loud, except for myself. <laughs> 
Is that a picture of Taylor Swift? It sounds ridiculous. It is. It's, oh, I, th- I think it might be. On Big Brother, they thought it was a girl. <laughs> So how is it watching your roommate and best friend on national television? If you watch his audition video, he's sitting here like this, and then... It doesn't seem real to me. Yeah, I bet. And and like um, Jason, James is a very loved um, character on... Big Brother, so that must be really neat seeing all of the support that he's getting. Yeah! (laughs) (laughs) We're having a little bit of technical issues with Jay Nasty, but um, whenever you come on and have anything to say, make sure you do. Um, Jason, sorry. You just brought up Clay and Shelly, and I have I have a question for you. Okay. When you're in that environment that you're in, and you're cut off from the rest of the world, do you think relationships like theirs develop so quickly, so fast, because of genuine attraction, or because you're kind of cut off, and it's like camp, where everybody thinks they're going to be best friends forever? Or... I mean, it's sort of like the camp syndrome. I don't think everyone thinks they're going to be best friends forever. I think your world just becomes a really small place. The the whole world is then populated by 16 people. And if you ever want to be happy again or be in a relationship again, you're going to be with one of these damn 16 people. So I think it just makes relationships become very close very quickly, and that makes them escalate into showmances. I mean, by, like, day... What day did Devon get evicted? Day 22? By, like, day 16, I was like, ooh, Johnny Mac looks good. So (laughs) it's one of those things where you're just, like, you're so deprived in there that everyone is looking for some sort of bond. I think it's kind of a shame, I mean, maybe it's just a perspective from being from Canada and from watching Big Brother Canada. Have we ever really seen two um, lesbians or two gay men in the house at the same time? Because we've had a lot of same-sex relationships or showmances on Big Brother Canada, but I haven't really seen it on Big Brother US, and yet every season there's some chick and some blonde guy hooking up somewhere. That, I mean, that's very true. We did have two gay guys on one season before in season eight, but they were really there to be a twist and to hate each other, and that they did very well. So we've never really, I mean, the closest we've gotten is Zanke, and we all know that that's not really legitimate. I mean, I was hoping that there was going to be some cutie in there for me, but then again, in the gay world, we're quick to business, and at a, on a TV show, you can't be that quick to the business. So it would definitely be it would definitely be eye opening for America. I don't know if CBS is ready for it. Well, we're ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> you can come on Big Brother Canada anytime. We'll totally be ready yeah. for it. Okay, yeah. Hey, Kevin and Johnny had that little. They were like zanking it up for the first couple episodes of BB Can Three. Yeah, they were. And we had uh, Gary in season one, who also liked to dress as Zoe, Mm -hmm. and then season two, we almost brought in a second guy who performed in drag as well, so there's a lot of diversity on our shows. That's true. BB UK also has had um, lots of transgender people on. Um, Oh, yeah. It's it's kind of surprising that they, I mean, I understand that they made it such a big deal um, that Audrey came on, but I think it's a real, um, it's really telling how each country does different, um, maybe hard to not deal with, but you know, just things that just aren't diversity. as accepted right. as normal as they are in other places. It's it's interesting to see how each country handles that. That's true. I think like when the UK cast, they like to go for shock factor people. They mm-hmm. want to find the wag. They want to find the stripper. They want to find the rich guy. They're going to find very different people. And here in America, I feel like we almost do more of a representation of types of people or groups or areas. So I think our people end up being a little bit more toned down than, say, a foreign Big Brothers cast would be because they just go all out and find the craziest people they can. Yeah. I really... Sorry. I was going to say, I find with Big Brother Canada, they've also been really 
diverse about um, people coming from different ethnicities. And in season two, we had them sit down and explain, like, somebody was celebrating Easter and Passover, and I think there was also a Muslim holiday at the same time, and they were all coming together as one. Like, it's a... Right. Maybe that's just Canada. Overall. And I mean, even last year, you had... Um Godfrey and Pilar, both people that are, you know, st still have accents from when they immigrated. You guys get do a really good melting pot of more the society of the world or of Canada because you do have lots of different nationalities. I mean, everywhere does, but I find that Canada is really great about casting all the different types. Mm -hmm. And we've so even had French speakers because, you know. That's true. It is, it is nice, though. Like, obviously, um, BBUS is um, doing a little bit better with with Audrey and everything. There's there is definitely a progression mm -hmm. in what's accepted on television and what isn't. And it was so I just amazing. Can't wait to see what they find next year. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm it was so amazing that, that everyone was just like nice and nobody was like, you know, nobody had a problem. Everyone was like, "That's cool. We like yeah. you, anyways." Yeah, and then, we're like, so okay, that's not relevant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was really good to see, and I think that the viewing public also got on board because you guys were so accepting, and uh, I I really appreciated that personally for um, from your cast. Hey, you know what um, it is? You were all there to play a game. It doesn't matter who yeah. you are. So I mean. Like Davon said with her exit interview, that was a concern in the house of nobody may want to take out Audrey because how it makes you look to the outside world. But hey, there's a gay man every year and he's only won one time. So it doesn't matter what your nationality, your background, your sexual orientation, you're all there in that game to outdo each other and yeah. it's your job to vote each other out. It shouldn't matter what kind of background or what kind of life experience you've been through. No, it shouldn't. But speaking of people that aren't, nobody wants to get out, back to gameplay for a second. Yeah. I gotta know, what the hell is with Vanessa? Why does nobody feel that they can take her out? You know, I, this is a big question mark that I'm wondering. I'm wondering if people are sabrina her. I wonder if people are thinking she's so loathed at this point, why get her out? because she's never going to win, but if you give her a chance to do one of her lawyer speeches in those final two chairs, that girl is going to win. So I'm just hoping that they are smart and get her out sooner than later, but it does seem like she has caused so much chaos, and now she's just standing in the middle and letting it all happen around her while she cries for 14 hours a day. And um, for some reason, nobody is really gunning that hard at her. But then again, it's been a few weeks since we've seen um, my side of the house in power. And I know yeah. that when my side of the house gets in power, they are not going to forget about Vanessa. They're not going to forget what Vanessa did to us. She made us all look like idiots week five. And I know that especially Meg is not going to let that go. Yeah. And James won't either. Oh, they're, no. they're they're definitely they're definitely on to her. Mm -hmm. But I think what what she's doing differently um, is that she is thinking ahead. She is. is. She's she's playing multiple ga multiple moves ahead of everybody else, and That's so true. Um, I think she even said to Steve at one point he said that um, that he hasn't like thought about the end game yet, and she said, "Well, you better start." Yeah. <laughs> So I mean, that that just showed her showed me where her head is at, and hopefully people start to catch on because it is it is starting to get down to it. I mean, soon enough we'll be here. I mean, it's about to be September in a few days, and once September begins, they start kicking those people out pretty quickly. Yeah, she's also done a really great job of keeping bigger targets in the house. She has, and that's taking off the attention from her. Even though she is definitely ripping through that house like a tornado, just getting everybody out. What do you think it would have looked like though if you would have stayed and Austin would have left? Ooh, I have no idea. And you know, everything in this game, we even think about. I mean, the very first Hoh James won. There was like a point five difference in between him and Jace. And then I could have been co Hohs with Jace. The whole game would have been completely different. So I mean, there's no telling. We could go back to any specific moment and say, how do you think it'd be now? But if we really went back to week five when I got out, I think that um, Austin going 
would have, my group was united, even if it didn't look like we were united on the outside, we were all on the same page, we didn't need some silly alliance name to know that that's where our loyalties low lied, so um, <laughs> I think that we would have been united just like they really did after I left, and I actually probably see myself trying to work with the twins. I think that's one of the reasons I wanted Austin out is because then I could have worked with the twins and let them been a bigger target in front of me. So I think that the whole game could have been different. I think that if I would have survived that week, especially after being put on the block, I would have been able to work my way in pretty well and been a lot of people's go-to. Mm -hmm. I, I think you're probably right about that. Definitely, you would obviously have the numbers, and I th with Austin's departure, that would have crippled them. It would have completely combusted them. The twins would have been off by themselves. Then the rest of the other side, I mean, I would have had to gotten Kaleli's vote to stay. So then I would have been loyal to them. Hopefully they would remain loyal to me. I think that I would have been in a good spot, say I had just survived that week. And plus... No more Battle of the Block. That's what I was waiting yeah. for. Oh, oh my God. I was God. praying I for hope they don't have that next year. Oh, my God. Pray to the BB gods that there is no Battle of the Block next year. I want endurance comps. I want single HOHs. I want friggin' luxury competitions. Where were those at? Yeah. What do you yeah, think? You should have been ball? able to get some free clothes. I I prayed for that one. I said I need to get to the end of this game with a bunch of girls because that's the only way you guys ever do the shopping spree comp. But <laughs> I will rip all the clothes off that mannequin just like Kevin did in eleven. Did you have a strategy if you did get that? Oh, the luxury cop. Everything. I would have grabbed everything. I would have been running with the hangers still around my neck. I would have hurt myself to grab all those clothes. Just put the whole rack over your body. <laughs> exactly. I would carry it out. <laughs> what do you what think? Was your question, Sorry. What do you think is going to happen with the whole coming back from jury? How that's going to shake everything up? Like if Vanessa is still there and she's wronged everybody who's in jury, and one of them come back. I know. I think that's why they're leaving Vanessa is because they're thinking whoever comes back from jury that will be their biggest target, and then we'll all be good, and we all get an extra week with that person. I am trying to figure out who it will be. There's no telling what kind of comp it will be to come back in. Whether it will be a crapshoot like last year or an endur endurance comp like in season 15. But I think that whoever goes this week is going to have a hard time beating any of those three girls to get back in. I'm thinking whoever goes this week is going to be stuck in jury and will have a Shelly or a Becky or hopefully a Jackie back. Yeah, it would be great to see Jackie back. Oh, I so want her to come back. Just, just because I love Jackie to death, she really was someone I could have trusted in there the whole time. Um, Jackie didn't talk that much game to people, but Jackie was always talking game to me. So I know that Jackie was loyal to me, and I would have been loyal to Jackie, and I would love to see her to get a second chance at this check. Now, this morning I was watching the feeds, and it looks like the twins really, really want um, Johnny Mac out. Yes. But the, but the rest of the house, because Vanessa had kind of a blow up this mm -hmm. morning with Steve. And so it, it's looking like James and Meg might go with Steve along with Vanessa, but the twins are wanting I mean, Johnny it. Mac. Yeah, yeah right. that's what they want. I think, I don't understand what, they, I've actually read some of the things they've said about Johnny Mac. I don't understand where all the real like hate or disdain comes from him is. I don't but then either. Again, those twins were very nice to me the whole time until the week I was going and then they were off toasting my demise and calling me all types of names. So and then now they talk about how much they miss me. So I think it's when you're in that house and the person is the target for the week, you somehow have to convince yourself that you hate them to make the game a little bit easier on yourself. So I think they're just hating on him for the purpose of game, not really because there's anything wrong with Johnny Mac. When I left, I told Meg, you have two things to do now that I'm gone. You have to get Shelly out, well that's been accomplished, and you have to get Steve out because you're not going to be able to beat Steve at these end competitions. So I'm hoping that Meg is remembering that and I'm hoping that Meg can round up the rest of the house negative the twins and get Steve out this week because especially if it's an endurance comp to come back he's not going to be any of those three ladies yeah he's people 
people have underestimated Steve, but he is definitely picking up his game. So. Oh, yes. And, you know, out of the people who know how this game goes and what type of comps they'll have, he knows them better than anyone. Me and him were outside. We know all our days. I was the only person in my group that really knew the days. James told us, don't even tell me, um, that's up to you guys to win. And Meg never really fully absorbed them when I tried to drill them into her brain. But I ran them with Steve a few times. I know that Steve knows his stuff. And clearly yeah. after what he did last double eviction, I'm afraid to see him maybe get in power again and maybe take out someone like James or Meg. Yeah. I, I might... Go on, Kat. Sorry. As much as we really love Meg, everybody loves Meg. Um, I think she's positioned herself really well, intentionally or not, maybe, to be one of the people that somebody takes to the final three and then maybe two, thinking, mm -hmm. oh, she's weak, which isn't necessarily the case. She's not a floater. She has loyalties. She's not particularly great at the competition so far, right. but she's very well and she knows what's up. Mm -hmm. So if you could to that final three, what do you think the best position she would be in? Like, who who does she have to go with to win? Ooh, who does Meg have to go with to win? Well, I'd love to see her down there with James or Jackie, but she's not going to be able to beat either of them. Honestly, completely realistically, I don't think that any of my people are going to be able to win because that jury is stacked with people that were working together from the very beginning. Now I understand that people vote each other out and there's bitterness that comes. Shelly may not want to be loyal to Vanessa if Vanessa's down in those final two spots, but there is a part of you that wonders, well, they were in this Sixth Sense Alliance, Pretty much the Sixth Sense Alliance is mostly in jury. Well, they pretty much all are in jury except Clay. They're really going to be the five votes that decides who wins. So I'm afraid that regardless of what happens, one of those people are going to win. I actually had a dream that Liz was going to win while I was in the house. And I told everyone, don't let her win. She was really ignorant and ghetto about it in my dream. Do not let her win. But I can see her getting down to those two final spots maybe against someone like Meg, and then I think she would win. Or maybe she takes Austin instead of her sister. Or vice versa, maybe Austin takes her instead of Julia, and then they vote for the other twin. That is very true. If it's Austin versus Liz at the end, I think that Liz will win. I don't think anyone really likes Austin that much. I think people are playing the game with him, but when you really talk to him on a personal level, he does not warm your heart like Meg would. You're definitely not feeling that same sort of way you would when he speaks to you. So I think that him in the end, he's losing either way. Meg in the end, she could possibly lose either way. But I would love to see if maybe in these next couple weeks she can turn that around and become someone who has the potential to win. Let's talk about Austin's speech. Oh. Uh. What was that? <laughs> Girl, Austin has the worst speeches in the world. When he put me and Meg up when we did the phone party one, he put us up with this big, long, morbid poem, and they edited that out of the TV show because they realized how irrelevant and dumb it sounded, and me and Meg were both like, this guy's an idiot. Now, this poem, this last week, made it to TV. Still doesn't make him look like an idiot. He's too busy trying to put on a show and thinking that he's going to be the next crow than um, playing Big Brother. He should be thinking strategic with his um, speeches and not trying to, you know, read Dr. Seuss. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> that's, that's the only word for it. It was just crazy and stupid. Something else. Yeah, it's yeah. really stupid. He's too obsessed with trying to start his wrestling career to think about that, so he's just trying to put on a show at all times, which makes him even more terrible to deal with or unable to stand. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't know too much about wrestling personally, but you would, you would think you would want a character to seem, like, tough and scary, and that just seemed... Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't scary. Everybody's just scratching their head like, what? <laughs> what <laughs> the hell? Yeah. He, a lot of the stuff that comes out of his mouth makes you scratch your head. It's that, like, medieval whatever the hell psychology degree he got. I don't know. Yeah. 
Um, what was I, it? A master's in um, medieval, medieval lit or something? Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't find him as abrasive. Like, I can kind of, in my mind, I'm like, okay, I kind of see what you're trying to do and have, like, a career outside of this and whatever. Mostly, I just kind of want to cut off the ponytail beard, though. Oh, girl, it's, it's foul. That would it's be nice. I just, you know, I don't hold anything else against him, and that's his own fashion choice for his character or whatever, but I have a... The thing with ponytails, mostly I just want to cut them off. So I think if I saw a ponytail beard, I would just want to grab the nearest pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> He's got I way mean, too much hair. Just way too much. And I asked him if he'd ever cut his hair one time, and he pretty much told me no, that it was his an extension of his personality, which sort of said a lot to me because I had hair all through high school. I looked like McCray in high school. Like, I know what it's like to have hair. But to say I want to see pictures. Oh my God, my license! I look like flock of seagulls. Um, <laughs> uh, but to say it's an extension of your personality, you're a grown adult. You should know what your personality is, and you should know that whether you have no hair, hair, whether you're nine feet tall or nine inches tall, that your personality is your personality, irregardless of all that. So it made me think, like, you really think your hair is your personality? Okay. Well, with that speech, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> he, I did think, he said a while ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, he would consider cutting off the beard or the oh, hair. Oh, for Liz. For Liz, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully she can coax him into that and then dump him because she would be doing him a favor for life. Or let's see a comp where he has to shave his hair. I pray. He actually said if they ever did a How Bad Do You Want It veto comp, he would decline to shave his head because of it's his hair and that's his personality. But well, I really if Liz think was on the block? if Liz or him are on the block or they're on the block against each other, he'd be dumb not to shave his hair. Uh, I don't know. A half a million dollars can buy you a wig. Yeah, make it happen, CBS. That's what we want to see. Please. And who knows? I mean, maybe clean shaven and like with a crew cut, he would look completely different. Maybe I, everybody would like it. Maybe. Maybe he'd look way more handsome. I mean, I'm not into the like, let's have a tree root all across your body thing, but he would look a whole lot better. He'd look like a civilized human being. Yeah, he would. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we saw Becky go home recently. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question for you and her toe. Did okay. you did you ever see anything funky happening with her toe when um, you were there? No, I heard this whole like her limping around on her toe. Does anyone know how she hurt her toe? Well, she said that she that Austin stepped on it. Oh uh, well, but then he weighs the like house. <laughs> but the house guests are saying that she has had this problem all along, and that they mm. they saw her toe before, and it looked nasty. So mm -hmm. I have never really paid attention to her feet. I am a super feet are very disgusting to me. I try not to look at them. Um, Becky did m almost more working out in that house than any other girl. So I I had never really seen her have any problems with that. I was surprised that with her being disabled with this toe that they didn't want to keep her. I would have yeah. said, why are we going to send her out? She can barely walk. But in there, sometimes you have your blinders on and you just are, like, busy fulfilling the last week's plan. Yeah. What did you think about her gameplay? I think Becky, you know, Becky was one when I came out and everyone was sort of like, where's Becky been? Just like Jackie was at first. And I'm thinking, they've been there talking to game to me at 3.30 in the morning every morning. Like, they have been playing just because we weren't, like, central CBS characters because we weren't in some big alliance with a bunch of buffoons. I think that we really never got any airtime for the game we were talking. But Becky had her own game. Becky was smart to the game. I mean, Becky showed during her HOH that she was no prisoners. She was definitely going to do what she wanted to do. Um... I definitely have respect for Becky's game. Not in the necessarily in the week that she went and ratted on James to 
um, Clay and Shelly. Not that I think that was really a game changer. There's lots of people in there who are leaking information to other people. I think that she just got a lot more heat for that. But I mean, I was surprised to see how many people were giffing her face onto rats. And I mean, they, I have not seen one picture with Steve's face on a rat. So I think it's all just because of what it's shown. Becky got a bad rep that week. But Becky actually, for someone who is known as the pretty girl from Denver that was found on Tinder or was there to be the cute, cute athletic girl and didn't really know Big Brother, I think her game was pretty good. That's true. I didn't I didn't think about it that way. I, I wasn't necessarily a fan of her game myself, but, yeah, somebody that's not a super fan and involved in the game, she played. She played. Definitely played. She yeah. put in her work and studied before she came. She wasn't one like Clay thought he was going to like Big Brother's Little Sisters or something. Yeah, I heard that he had thought that it was the charity Big Brother he was signed up for at first. <laughs> I don't know how they thought sticking people in a house was going to raise money for that, but... Have the other house guests that um, were evicted, uh, have they reached out to you at all? I have talked to pretty much everyone. I talked okay. to Jace through Twitter, like, very briefly. I talked to Clay through a message very briefly. I actually talked on to the phone with Audrey today. I've talked on the phone with Davon a few times. So I definitely um, talked to all of them. I talked to Jeff a little bit. A lot of them are doing things together. I don't have the money to fly down to Atlanta and go to parties with them, but I've definitely been trying to stay connected with them through the interwebs. That's good. Are you looking forward to the rap party? I am. I cannot wait to the rap party. I cannot wait to see all these people. I cannot wait to tackle Meg. I just cannot wait for. It sounds weird, but for it to be over. Uh, well, that's I just, not weird. Yeah, it's not it's that nice it's, I want it to again. be over. Exactly. I just. I would like to. It's been a long time since we've all reconvened, and really. Out of a lot of Big Brother casts in the past, we all did get along quite well. We haven't had that many wild explosions. I mean, there, we had this moment on day three where we all went around the table and people were, like, crying about how much we loved each other. I mean, we knew it was early. We knew it was only day three. We knew it wasn't going to last. But it is still nice to maybe get back to that place with people where we all genuinely did have some form of like for each other. Well, and you're the only people in the world that had this experience, so exactly. it's it's not bizarre that you would want to reconnect with them again. So, who do we think is going to go home for this week, Steve or Johnny Mac? I'm trying to release good words into the universe, and I'm going to say that Steve is going home this week, but the realist in me is telling me that Johnny Mac is probably going home. And what is your reasoning behind that prediction? Well, I'm thinking the twins are going to unwaver. They're going to go with Johnny Mag. If Becky and um, Becky, if Meg and James <laughs> want to go in a Vic Steve, I think that's best for them. And that really leaves like people like Vanessa in the middle. And I think Vanessa is going to be so thankful that the twins have decided to not betray her this week with Austin. And also, Steve is her minion. So I'm thinking she's going to vote to evict Johnny Mac, and then Johnny Mac will go, and Meg and James will probably just have to change their vote and go with majority because I don't think they'll be able to get the votes any other way. What do you? What is your prediction for final three, two, and one? Final three, two, and one? Yeah. Well, the final three definitely has my girl Meg in there. I think it will have Liz. And I think it will have, I'd like to say James, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get down there. I don't think anyone is going to want to go into a final three situation with both Meg and James because they're yeah. clearly, you're the odd man out. So I'm thinking it could be three very random people. I might actually, I don't, I, I kind of would not want this to be it, but I can see Steve, Liz, Meg. And then who do you think will be the, the final, final two? two? I think that Liz will probably win the final HOH because she seems to kill at a lot of these comps. She's very good at the physical and the mental. And I think she would choose to take Meg with her. And then Meg and her would be final two. And then I see her probably winning over Meg, unfortunately. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So we'll 
find out soon enough to see if that happens. Well, let's hope it doesn't go that way. I don't want to give that chick a check. <laughs> well, um, I, sorry. For me, okay. I was kind of thinking, like, if I was playing the game or if I was in this situation, I would kind of peg, like, Meg and James kind of coming from behind with whoever comes back from jury. Because Ooh, I'm forgetting been, about who comes back from jury. Well, because there's so much infighting the past few weeks in the whole Austin and Vanessa and the twins, mm -hmm. and they just keep turning on each other, and they're suspicious of everybody, and they're suspicious of Steve, and maybe we like Steve, and maybe we don't like Steve, and it's just up and down every day. So if they can kind of, I figure, I figure like their alliance is going to cannibalize each other, and then one right. of them's going to break off and go over to Megan James and be like, listen. We have to get rid of all the rest of them. I'll be with you two to the end. Like, I could even see Austin suddenly breaking apart and just being like, I'm never going to come between the twins. Let's get him out. I can see that. I mean, he would do what he'd definitely try to aim for Julia first and then try to maybe rekindle something with Liz. But we still have another, another double eviction coming, and that's a perfect yeah. time to either flush both the twins out or Austin and one of the twins. They're going to be the only main target left in the house for next double eviction. Yeah, I I would love to see the twins go. Personally, it's it's crazy that they've been left in the house that, this long. I understand the reasoning behind it, but man, that is a risky move keeping mm -hmm. them in there. Well, you know, they had those, those people protecting them all game. I initially wanted to get them out when they were just Liz, when there was no reference to Julia, because then I thought, hey, we're all going to get a second chance to come back if we're in jury. I mean, they're getting that chance anyway, but imagine we did get her out. Maybe there yeah. would have been a chance for Devon or someone that pre jury yeah. to come back. So I think it was a missed opportunity for gameplay, but I also understood the the failed twist. The Big Brother viewer in me wants to see the twins come in, whether you like them or you loathe them. They, you want to see the twist at least come to fruition. Yeah, that's true. Was there ever a time in your mind when you knew, like you totally knew there were twins, did you ever think to yourself, I'm going to not tell anyone and then I'm going to talk to them and like see if we can play both sides of the house together and let them do their own thing? I, that's what I really should have done. I should have said, listen, this is what it is, chicks. I know, blah, 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 blah. Like I said, we are very sassy personalities. They're actually very similar to me that I think we actually could have bonded on a friendship level and maybe that would have opened our doors. But I think because the day that it came out and Davon tells me and then me and Davon stare at her for nine hours and then I tell Meg and once you tell Meg then we had to tell James and then we had to tell Jeff so I think it slowly turned into a we told way too many people pretty much the day we discovered it so there was never really the opportunity for me to pull them aside and say hey before I tell everyone this because I had already told everyone it but I should have definitely was thinking game and should have tried to go that route but being such a BB historian I knew how it worked in season five I knew that even if we called them out they were never going to admit it I did not expect that people would be able to weaponize them as a twist and use it to their advantage, sort of like the MVP was used in 15. I just yeah. didn't think it would go that route, so I thought, why approach them about it? Because it's not going to get me anywhere. So I never even really figured I could go that route. Looking back, it's exactly what I should I should have done. I should have crawled right up both of those girls' behinds and said, it's okay, I'm going to tell everyone that I've never met you before. You're the exactly the same. There's nothing different about your noses. I would have, like taken back everything I had just told everyone, but it was already out there, so there was nothing to really do. Do you think that that was your downfall? I think it was. I think because you're so bored in there and you just chime on the same things and it was so interesting to see what twin we're going to have on one day, I think that was partially my downfall. I should have been thinking about how to work with them instead of keeping them my permanent enemies. In this game, you have to do, I love to quote Jerry from, I think, season three, uh, no permanent enemies, no permanent allies. And that is exactly what I did not do. I went in there and I said, this is my group. I'm only rolling with them. I hate the rest of y'all. I'm not even trying to act like I'm friendly with you. I was playing like it was Big Brother 6, and I should have been playing like it was Big Brother 17. Um, what was your favorite moment in the house? 
Ooh, you know, I've had this one, and I, I said that I think it was when I stood on that pole and won the first HOH, but that was like a moment to prove to myself that I can play with the big kids, right. and that it doesn't matter that I'm nine feet, I'm uh, not nine inches, <laughs> and, you know, I can play just as hard as everybody else, so I think that was like my, and it was all downhill after that, but like some of my favorite moments are just the ridiculous, ridiculousness of being up late and listening to people's funny stories or Meg with the ironing board in the storage room. I almost like choked on cheese because she like fell with the ironing board. It's it, There's a lot of different moments, but probably the crowning HOH moment, just to say that I actually won something. Yeah, well, or that was going to be party. question. Foam party was so much fun. That, well, that was during the uh, twist, right? That was the, during the Battle the of the Block. Takeover. Yes. Oh, 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 right, right, right. It right, was right, Grok's right, right. takeover, and we had yeah. to pull all the slimy Coachella leftovers yeah. into the VIP boots. What's been your favorite moment outside of the house? Just Ooh, watching. Watching. <laughs> Probably Fingergate. <laughs> just, because, <laughs> just because it's so mortifying. And it's so funny because nobody in there, like, knows what's going on. So we're seeing it all on the outside, but they don't know that finger gate's going on. So I think it's going to be a shock for them when they come out. And for us, shocker. that is... Yeah, shocker. <laughs> and it's for us, it's just funny. I think it it has definitely been a main point everyone likes to chime on, just because it's vile. Yeah. Um, now that you are part of the Big Brother family... What are you looking forward to most? Oh, my gosh. I've already talked a lot to Big Brother alum people, which is so strange to me because I'm like, these are like my baby Jesuses that I've been yeah. obsessed with since I was like 10 years old. How do they know me? Why do they want to speak to me? Like, I speak to, I spoke to Danielle Donato and Brittany Haynes, and I was in heaven. Like, I almost don't know how to speak to them because I'm like a fangirl myself where I'm like, oh, like I'm nervous to talk to these people. So I think that's what the most exciting part is talking to all these people that I've loved for so many years and now they know your name and they love you back. It's all very surreal. And I really want to meet Diane from season five. Somebody in the BB fan, find me Diane. <laughs> one person I have not like come in contact with. I'm obsessed with her. Why are you so obsessed with her? I am obsessed with everything about Diane. Diane was like a bad bitch when I needed to meet a bad bitch. I'm probably like <laughs> 13 years old, and Diane just went in that house and was not afraid to open her mouth. She wasn't afraid of confrontation. I, I definitely identify a lot with Diane's personalities. She's not someone that's come from a silver spoon in her mouth. She's someone who has had to work and struggle for what she has, being in Tennessee. I think they called her the trailer park girl. I mean, you're always fighting the stereotype of whatever you are. I'm like the hood New York, Boston kid. She was the trailer park Kentucky girl. Uh, it's nice to see those type of people thrive and get a chance at something. So I think I was always inspired by Diane. Plus, she like ran season five like a boss. I mean, she got caught up down at the end, but she really knew exactly when to flip sides that season, and she really knew exactly exactly how to make those rest of those people dance. Well, it's really neat that she inspired you and now you are where you are. Right, and 10 I'm years sure there's going to be some future BB cast that are going to be inspired by you and they're going to be freaking out that they get to talk to you now. So that's Hey, that would be cool. cool. I'll be excited to talk to them. Never give up, guys. You don't I don't care if you live in your mom's basement, still apply. You can get on this show. It is possible. What did you do to prepare? Oh, to, like, for casting? To get, to, yeah, to get on the show and well, when you had an inkling that you were going to come on. I sent in a video for season 15 and never heard back. Probably bullet dodged because all the drama they had. Um, so I did not apply for season 16. And then this year I was thinking, I don't really know how to self-edit. I mean, you guys are talking to me now. I just go on and on. I never shut up. So I don't know how to boil down what I say into three minutes. So I was just like, screw it. They're doing a casting call. Let me just go to this casting call, show my behind, and let's see what happens with it. So I just went there. I screamed over everyone. I called myself the baddest bitch. I was just 
making sure that all the attention was on me because I was making sure that they knew I was there for the half a million dollars. I wasn't there to be on TV. I wasn't there because I'm going to apply to every reality show there is. It was Big Brother or Bust for me. I'm only obsessed with this show. It's my passion. So I really just went there and was myself and explained how much I'm obsessed with this all. The casting process progresses. The whole time you're sort of thinking, what do they see in me? Why the hell would they want me? But you still just take it all and go, okay, I'm going to do this. Just be yourself the entire time. And then even once they started to call me and it sounded like it was a possibility and they were thinking about, you know, when they were going to come surprise me with a key, not that that's what I knew that they were doing, yeah. I was still in, this isn't happening. I am a realist. I'd rather not be disappointed because it never happens. I'd rather just be excited that I made it through however many rounds. And so pretty much up until the day before they came and got me, I was still like, this isn't real. I didn't pack until like the night before they came and got me because I was still like, no, not happening. They're just screwing with me. Is there anything that you missed that you should have brought? Oh, packing? I actually did pretty well. Being a feeder and stuff, I knew I couldn't have the logos. I knew I couldn't have lots of stuff with words on it. I was pretty good about what I could bring and what I couldn't bring. So I actually probably had more clothes than anyone. Oh, well, that's awesome. Most of the girls wearing my pants, so. I mean, <laughs> did you leave anything behind accidentally or on um, purpose? I left... Uh, Pretty much my the outfit I hosted the squirrel comp in. Yeah. Pretty much left all of that behind. I only have the shorts from it. I gave James the shirt. I gave Liz the boots. I gave Becky the stupid hat. Um, I left Meg with a gray shirt. And um, oh, I left Jackie and Meg together with this orange sweater that I never wore. I never I never wear it at home. I don't know why I brought it with me. I never wore it in there. So I just said, here, girls. Take this bright orange sweater if y'all want it, have it. So uh, there's probably a little bit of my clothes floating around in there. Well, we were going to play some games, but we have been talking, and I'm sure I could just talk to you forever. because I can go on. <laughs> oh, I think we all can because we are just passionate and we love this game. But I will do a quick little game right at the end. Um, it's going to be like Shag marry, and kill, except we'll okay. do a BB version for this season, okay. which would be showmance, a line, and evict okay. for, any, for anybody in the cast this season. Who would that be for you? Ooh, showmance, a line, and or evict. evict. Yeah. Well, my evict will always be Austin. It was Austin from, like, week two. It will always be Austin. Um, I never wanted to be his jockey. I don't sit on horses. And um, my line, my line. Obviously, my loyalties were always with Davon. They would have been with Davon had she had stayed. But I think that in the larger scheme of the game, Meg was probably a better alliance for me because Davon was always going to be a target with those people. So even when it was Meg versus Davon, I sort of knew that. I would have loved for Davon to stay, but for my long-term game, I was probably better off with Meg. Now, hey, I'm out pre-jury just like Davon. Who knows what had happened the opposite way, but in that moment, I felt like my better alliance was Meg. And my showmance, um, Clay flirted with me a little bit the first couple days. He'd never admit that, but he definitely hit on me a little <laughs> bit. But I would say Johnny Mac, even with that voice, Johnny Mac is a good guy, and he's pretty good looking. I mean, he got more muscle mass than I do, so shit. Yeah, he's cute, and so he is, that's he probably is my, lovable. Yeah, he's lovable. So that's my my uh, showman's would be Johnny Mac, my align would be Meg, and my evict would be Austin. Now for all seventeen seasons. Ooh, all seventeen seasons. Yes, but only Ooh. the only the three: the showman's, evict, and align. Well, I would probably, oh gosh, there's so many people I want to evict. I hate so many people that have been on this show. And <laughs> now who I'm do you hate that, them most? Yeah, and like now that I'm in the BB family, they're all going to hate me back. Everyone's like, you're going to be nice to these people. You're going to meet well, them. I'm like, just, I don't just care. Just spin it as gameplay for gameplay. For gameplay. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's for gameplay, some people that I hate were actually good at gameplay. I really can't stand Frankie, but you really can't knock his gameplay because he really did win the challenges and do what he needed to do. But that would probably be my evict. My evict would probably be Frankie. My showmance would probably be 
Um, probably Kevin from season 11 or Nick from season 8, my bays. And my line would be Brittany Haynes or Danielle Donato because those are my girls. Oh, I would love to see that alliance. That would be fantastic. Oh, my God. We'd America be great. would It'd, love it, too. Oh, it'd just be me and Brittany yeah. talking trash, and then Danielle's <laughs> telling us to shut up the whole time. <laughs> I'd love to see a DR with you and Brittany. <laughs> when we first got our Wax Street Boys outfits, I was not very happy, and they were like, Jason, can you act like you're happy? And I was like, just let me have my Brittany Haynes moment, okay? If I want to sit here and throw a fit, just let me. <laughs> Um, so I guess we'll just wrap this up now. Do you have anything um, coming up in the near future that you're excited about or you want people to uh, follow you on? I mean, I'm doing lots of podcasts this week, so look out for that, the interweb peoples. And you can follow me at the J Roy. I have a Snapchat at the J Roy. You can try to find me on Facebook looking under Jason Roy. It might be chaos. You might not hear back from me on there. Facebook is not built for me. And um, Instagram is soon to follow because I keep hearing, how dare you not have an Instagram? Okay, well, I'm sure everybody will be looking out for that on Twitter. And how about you, Kat? Do you have anything new going on that you'd like to promote? Um, normally I'd say yes, but right now stuff's kind of under wraps. I've written a book, and I'm in talks with some stuff about that, but I can't really talk about it. But you can follow me on Twitter and Tumblr under Twitter is Kat Arnett, Tumblr is Kiss My Flash. And I'm on Instagram, a bunch of other stuff. But basically, I'm mostly on Twitter because it's like constantly on my phone. And I'll leave kind of cryptic clues about what I'm doing. And I'm writing a new series for Awesome Friday. Um, I used to write about Big Brother Canada and kind of compare it to a very different sort of literary themes and all kinds of stuff. And now I'm writing about books that should be adapted to TV shows for them. Ooh. So. That's awesome. what I'm doing, but mostly I'm on Twitter talking about, you know, random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like like everybody else on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, great. So um, for everybody that doesn't know, um, this is Reality Rehab, and we are going to have a show every single week. Um, right now we are on Big Brother um, US, and we also do a whole bunch of other um, shows, reality shows on getreallol.com. There are forums, there are updates, there is the Twitter, there's the Facebook pages, like everything that a reality show fan could want, Get Real LOL has. So make sure you stay tuned and you're watching what we're doing. Thank you so much again, Jason, for being on our first show. Sorry about the technical difficulties we had in the beginning, but I am so grateful you came on. It was fantastic talking to you. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. All right, everybody. Have a good one, and thank you for watching.